Hey everybody, um, I've got our new book that we're going to read together. This is um, book two in the Doll People series. Um, it does have a lot of the same characters um, from the first book, and so it'll be important that you have heard or read that book before starting this one. Um, and I showed y'all, if you read the Doll People with us, I showed y'all um, some of the similarities in the cover, how on the Doll People on the front it had the Doll family's house. Annabelle and them, um, the really old house, and then on the back it had Tiffany and the Fun Crafts um, dollhouse. And so on this side, we see Tiffany and Annabelle look happy, arm, arms around each other, yellow backpack, and we see this doll, um, and the title is The Meanest Doll in the World, so we can probably predict that this could be who that is. And then at the back, we see Annabelle and Tiffany do not look as comfortable, and the backpack is turned blue, and we see three new dolls we've never seen before. All right, so as we get started today with chapter one, I wanted to show you this a couple pictures here um, in the beginning. So this is a picture of just the doll family's house, and that was in the very beginning of the doll people too. Here is a picture of the inside of the doll family's dollhouse. You can always pause this if you'd like to look a little bit more carefully. So we've got Auntie Sarah and Uncle Doll down here. Uncle Doll looks like he's leaving. We've got Annabelle here. We've got Nanny, we've got Mama and Papa, we've got Bailey, um, Bailey or Bobby, I can't remember the brother's name of this one, and then Baby Betsy, and they all seem to be like, she's pointing, she's pointing, they're looking at something, so that's interesting, and then this is funny how the author did this, so we've got the, got characters down here, meanest. Oh, even more characters running now. Doll. All right, so there's the whole doll family in the world. Look at Uncle Doll there. The meanest doll in the world. That's the title here. Um, and then we have this picture in the book. She does look pretty mean, doesn't she? Okay. And this is so funny. Um, it kind of looks like someone wrote in the book, but this is, it actually is how the book came. So it says, the meanest doll in the world, and someone scratched out meanest and wrote greatest. And then there's a hand with the pen that's drawing through the book. And then this is the table of contents. And it's got, it says, I am queen of all dolls, written on the table of contents. Okay, so we don't know who that is. We know that it's whoever that picture is. It's probably the meanest doll. She's writing in books and terrorizing people. So um, this is chapter one called Miami Beach A Go-Go. Annabelle Doll sat in the soap dish high above the bathtub in the Palmer's house. Since Nora Palmer was just below her taking a bath, Annabelle had to hold still, still, still. So here's a picture. There's Annabelle up here in the soap dish, and that's Nora down there in the bathtub. She could not be caught moving, but she was desperate to see the cause of all the splashing and shouting she heard. Shark! Shark attack! cried Nora. Look out, dollies! Get out of the way! There was a tremendous splash and the sound of sloshing as water hit the tile floor of the bathroom. Everyone out of the ocean! commanded Nora. Come on, dollies! Come back to the beach! For a moment, Annabelle heard nothing. Even though she knew full well that the entire Funcraft family was in the tub, like Annabelle, they could not talk, laugh, or talk, or move about on their own, not while Nora was in their room. Annabelle thought longingly of the dollhouse, her nice, quiet home, and of Kate Palmer, Nora's nine-year-old sister, the owner of the doll family in their house. Kate never played wild, noisy games with the dolls. She merely posed them in the rooms of their ancient house and occasionally talked to them or rearranged the furniture. But Nora, who was five, and the owner of the Funcrafts invented games like Miami Beach a Go Go and Rancher Family. She was only supposed to play those games with the Funcrafts, who were new and made of plastic. But often she crept into Kate's room and snatched up Annabelle and maybe one of the other dolls, Mama or Papa or Nanny or Uncle Doll or Auntie Sarah or Bobby or Baby Betsy. And the next thing Annabelle knew, she was riding a hideous old plastic horse or being driven into the bathroom in a Barbie car. 
Since the dolls were over 100 years old, made of china and dressed in antique clothing, trimmed with lace and ribbons, Nora's games could be dangerous. She's kind of rough. However, Annabelle admitted sometimes they looked exciting, and the fun crafts certainly enjoyed them. Annabelle decided she simply had to see what was going on in the water below her. Ever so slowly, she pulled herself up straighter, then bent over up just a teeny bit and slid her eyes downward. Annabelle didn't know how much didn't know much about baths, but she was fairly certain that a person taking a bath was supposed to be naked and Nora was not naked. She was wearing a flowered bathing suit, blue swimming goggles, and a pair of rubber flippers floating around her in the tub were part of her farm set. Two cows, a chicken, and a sheep, six small boats, Tiffany Funcraft, who was Annabelle's best friend, and Tiffany's family, her brother Bailey, her mom, her dad, and baby Brittany. Nora had snapped off the plastic everyday clothes and snapped on the contents of Funcraft Accessory Pack number 214A. So here's a picture of Tiffany swimming. Swimming in the bathtub. Like she's having a pool party in the bathtub. The dolls were now wearing bathing suits, caps, and sunglasses. Annabelle couldn't be sure, but she thought the Funcrafts were smiling. Run for your life, dollies, said Nora suddenly as she stood up in the tub. It's a tidal wave. Nora dropped into the water with an enormous splash and the fun crabs rode the crest of a wave from one end of the tub to the other. Annabelle felt foolish and, un and unnecessary and Annabelle felt foolish and unnecessary sitting high up in the soap dish with no role in this game. True, Nora had stuck a paper cap and a little pair of sunglasses on her, but no part of Annabelle was plastic and no part of her belonged in the water. If she were to fall into the tub, her glue would unstick, her ribbons would untie, and her clothing would probably float away, maybe even go down the drain. So Annabelle was relieved that Nora knew enough to keep her dry, and she was pleased, at least, to have been given the paper cap and the glasses. So here's the tidal wave that Nora Nate made, and you can see the Funcraft family over here riding the wave. Seems like an adventure that they would enjoy. But she didn't like feeling silly and useless watching from a distance while Tiffany floated and rode with waves, rode the waves. This was how it always was with Tiffany, though, thought Annabelle. It was one of the things that set her apart from her best friend. Annabelle remembered the years and years and years when she had been the only living girl at 26 Weatherby Lane. Her family and their dollhouse had been shipped across the ocean from England to the United States in 1898 to be a present for a little girl named Gertrude. Kate's great-grandmother... So Gertrude is Kate's great-grandmother, who is not, she doesn't live in the house anymore. Grandma Catherine is the oldest one that lives in the house, and Gertrude is Grandma Catherine's mom. Gertrude had grown up and had a daughter of her own, Kate's grandmother, Catherine, who lived with the Palmers, and then Catherine had Annie, who was Kate's mother, and then Annie had Kate and Nora. During all that time, Annabelle had known no other living dolls except the ones in her family. Why, she used to ask her mother, why aren't there any other dolls living here, li any other live dolls here? Not all dolls take the oath, Mama would reply patiently. The doll code of honor is serious. A lot of responsibility comes with being a living doll. Many dolls choose to be regular, everyday dolls. But not us, Annabelle had said. Nope, not us, Mama agreed. Annabelle had lived in the human's house for more than a hundred years before the fun crafts arrived. She'd been glad she was a living doll, but sometimes she had felt lonely, especially after Auntie Sarah had disappeared. Annabelle loved her mother and her father. She loved her brother Bobby and their sister Baby Betsy. Baby Betsy was an enormous doll from a different doll set, but who cared? She loved Nanny, who helped to take care of her, and Bobby and Baby Betsy. And she loved Uncle Doll, but she had wished for another girl doll her own age, someone who could be her best friend. That was before she had met Tiffany. This was what Annabelle was thinking when below her she heard a slap and a whoosh as Nora sat down hard in the tub, and suddenly she found herself eye to eye with Tiffany, who had been shot up in the air by the force of the water. Ooh-wee! Hi, Annabelle! called Tiffany in a tiny doll voice that she knew Nora couldn't hear over the noise of her tidal waves. Then she dropped back into the tub. So here's a picture of... There's Annabelle up on her soap dish and Tiffany flopping up on the tidal wave. Oh, and a rancher family doll. <laughs> Annabelle tried very hard not to laugh. What, she thought, would she do without Tiffany? 
The fun cross had lived at the Palmer's house for less than a year, and already Annabelle couldn't think how she had managed to get along for an entire century without a best friend. True, for the first 55 years of that century, Auntie Sarah had been around, and Annabelle's life had at least been interesting. Auntie Sarah liked to explore. She liked to leave the doll's house and investigate things in the larger world of the human's house. She used to come back from her adventures and tell Annabelle about history and current events and famous woman explorers and other things she had learned from listening to the radio or trying to get a peek at newspapers and magazines and library books. But one day, almost 46 years ago, Auntie Sarah had left the dollhouse and hadn't returned. Annabelle and her family had been too afraid to go searching for her. Doll state, Nanny would remind Annabelle, which always meant made Annabelle feel grumpy because probably because she had been in doll state more often than any other dolls. If a human saw a doll moving or thought she saw one moving, then poof, the doll was rendered motionless and lifeless like an ordinary doll for 24 hours. This meant that the dolls felt free to move about only when they were absolutely certain they wouldn't be seen. It also meant that whenever Annabelle asked about going on a hunt for Auntie Sarah, the answer was no. During the long, lonely time when Auntie Sarah had been missing, Annabelle had sometimes wondered something horrible. She had wondered if perhaps her aunt had been a little too careless and had landed not in doll state, but in permanent. Permanent doll state, a phrase the grown-ups didn't even like to say very often, referred to the worst thing that could happen to a doll. Mama and Papa used to say PDS in whisper and look down at their shoes. There's no such thing, Bobby and Annabelle used to say bravely to one another, but they weren't sure. PDS, so PD, anytime you hear PDS, that's talking about permanent doll state. PDS, like doll state, harkened back to the oath the Doll Code of Honor, which was meant to protect and preserve the secret life of dolls. The code reminds us, Nanny would tell Annabelle and Bobby, to be careful and that there are consequences if we are not careful. We might be punished with doll state. Or even, she would add, lowering her voice to a whisper, PDS. Belly flop! Belly flop! cried Nora from below, and Annabelle leaned over just far enough to see Nora stand up and drop Mom Funcraft down, down to the water where she landed on her tummy with a small smack. Annabelle settled back in the soap dish. Her thoughts returned to the lonely years when Auntie Sarah was missing. Annabelle had been afraid she would never see her aunt again. She had even realized she could no longer remember her very well. Then the fun crafts had arrived and everything had changed. The fun crafts had been a birthday present for Nora when she turned five. Their big pink plastic house had been placed in Nora's bedroom, which was down the hall from Kate's. Before Annabelle knew it, she and Tiffany were sneaking back and forth between the two rooms whenever they felt it was safe to do so. It hadn't taken Annabelle long to tell her new friend about her missing aunt and to show her Auntie Sarah's journal which she had recently discovered. So here's Annabelle on the soap dish, thinking back to one of those moments we read about in the first book when they were reading Auntie Sarah's journal together. If not for Tiffany in the journal, Annabelle now thought Auntie Sarah might still be trapped in the attic. Annabelle was about to recall that creepy night in the dim, musty attic when suddenly the door to the bathroom flew open and banged against the wall. Kate stood in the entryway, hands on hips. She looked at the puddles of water, at Nora in her bathing suit and flippers and goggles, and the fun crafts and the array of boats and animals in the tub, and she caught sight of Annabelle in the soap dish wearing the paper cap and the glasses. Nora! exclaimed Kate. What are you doing? It's almost your bedtime. Kate pulled the plug on the tub, and Annabelle heard the water begin to gurgle. And what is Annabelle doing in here? She shouldn't be near the water. What if she fell in? She's not like your dollies, Nora. No, thought Annabelle, I'm nothing like Tiffany. Nora stood up in the tub, dripping water down onto the fun crafts. That's why she's sitting way up there, said Nora. So she's out of the way. She's just watching. Annabelle's porcelain face reddened, just watching. Sometimes Annabelle felt that was the only thing she was any good at. Kate leaned across the tub and gently reached for Annabelle. Come on, she said. It's your bedtime. I think I'm going to give you quiet night. Give you a quiet night tonight. This meant Annabelle knew that after Kate had settled the dolls in their beds, she was going to close up the front of their house and lock the tiny heart-shaped padlock with its key. Kate didn't do this very often, and Annabelle was glad. While a night closed into their house gave the dolls more freedom to move about and talk, it also meant that Annabelle was locked in and Tiffany was locked out. 
Annabelle sighed as she looked between Kate's fingers and the fun crafts below. She saw that Tiffany had floated all the way down to one end of the drain, to one end of the tub, and was smiling a teeny smile as she twirled around and around in the whirlpool over the drain. Tiffany probably didn't even realize that Annabelle was being taken away. Annabelle sighed again, feeling very small and left out. But she made a decision. If she didn't like feeling left out, then she would do something about it. She just didn't know what that something would be. Hmm, interesting first chapter. We got a lot of a recap from the first book, which that's okay. Um, but we kind of saw this comparison of characters. We've got Annabelle, who's kind of timid and breakable and feels left out. We've got Tiffany, who's wild and crazy and adventurous. So um, it's going to be interesting to see... Um, what she's going to do to keep herself from feeling left out. So we've got chapter two tomorrow called A Mission, um, and I will see you guys later. Bye.